What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hadfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Oop. Marty Sleva, Oop. and Sam Claiborne. Yes, cop me back. We've got a great show for this week. We've got to talk about um, the next Far Cry, which is now officially announced. Uh, we'll do some theorizing about that. We're going to talk about what was uh, the best-selling console and best-selling game here in the U.S. last month. But first, Ooh. Sam, I hear there's a new... IGN app, a new hot new IGN app. Oh yeah, I have it right. All here. the kids are using on my it's telephone. the hottest app in every high school in the nation. A right telephone here. application. It's a yeah. telephone application. You know what's really cool about this app, and you can watch me play with it on YouTube. Is that uh, <laughs> one of my favorite features about it is that now you can just swipe and you can just swipe over to uh, only games content if you yeah. want, and that's something that uh, right, get that movie stuff out of there. Yeah, I mean, you know, who I watches just, them? Not first of all. I Logan. like the main feed of IGN. I like all the TV and uh, movie stuff we have. Mm-hmm. And you can isolate that, too, by just tapping on movies or TV. But uh, I hear all the time from people, like, why can't I just look at game stuff? You can do that now. Yeah. Sap's great for that. You can also watch a video that sort of just lives in the little corner, and you can browse the rest of the site while the video's still playing. Uh, let me tell or you, you, Damon. Just swipe it any direction to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, just get out of here. My favorite thing about the IGN app is yes. the read later button. You can oh, tap yeah, the little icon in the corner later. and yeah. then just save them, and then they're in a nice little feed where it's like... Mm-hmm. It's good for uh, wikis, especially like yes. when I bounce in yeah. uh, from search, you know, to like a page on trines or something. I can actually just save it, yeah. and it'll be in the app. Sam also discovered you can turn off review scores. Yeah, well, if you don't want or yeah, on for sure. Uh, turn them on from your uh, feed, like of, of everything. If you're just going through and rolling, you know, through all stories, you can, you can turn off review scores. Now, when you go to the review, you, you're going to see the score at the bottom yeah. of it. I mean, it's Spoilers. definitely yeah. this has been a like <laughs> it sounds like it's very shilly. But I actually like, I mean, I like the app a lot. Yeah, and I'm I always like very pleased with it. It's a like, monstrous improvement over the last one. We always try to do our best to make everything we release, you know, just an A plus great product. And sometimes we really land it. And then sometimes it's like, well, we didn't quite get there the first time around. And the app, I, I'm actually they, the product team. Yeah. I really like it. Anyway, it has a notification system too, which is yes. only, like we, won't, we will not abuse it. Uh, but during E3, I highly recommend you get this because we have exclusives and we have stuff that only we will have first. And you might want to hear about it first. So it's available now for, in the iOS iOS App Store. I think it's coming to Android soon. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. All right, moving on to the news of the week. Ubisoft, uh, during their financial call this week, they confirmed that they'll have another uh, another Assassin's Creed, Far Cry 5, they yeah. said. They gave it the number. Uh, the Crew 2 and a couple other games are all coming within the next year, uh, before the end of this fiscal year. We already talked about Assassin's Creed re- recently. Uh, leaks point to it being either Origins or uh, something set in Egypt. We, we know about all that, and we expect that to be revealed very soon. I want, I'm more interested in talking about Far Cry 5 today. I'm a huge Far Cry fan ever since Far Cry 3, mm-hmm. and I really enjoyed Far Cry 4. I even enjoyed Far Cry Primal yeah. a lot. How are those cave bears? They're tough. <laughs> yeah, really it's tough. the worst kind of bear. <laughs> yeah, arguably. So you get a little saber t- saber tooth tiger friend. Yeah, follows you around everywhere. It's great. Uh, Far Cry Five. There's some rumors. Uh, so for the logo is uh, presented in red, white, and blue, which seems to be it could be a hint towards it taking France? place within France. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, taking place within the United States. Mm-hmm. There's some rumors that some people think it's a, a western set in the old west, oh, but then yeah, I think Ubisoft cool. itself has. Sort of denied yeah, that. Yeah, that, that rumor that rumor was kind of dumb because a bunch of people were reporting on it, and then it was this echo chamber. And someone actually asked Steve Gimmo on the earnings call. He's like, "Are you guys worried about Red Dead?" And he's like, "It's not a western. Stop it." Okay. Yeah, yeah. Competing. I with think they Red would Dead do a good job at making it look really good as a western. Yeah, though. sure. So, yeah. Uh, look really good anyway. I'm mm-hmm. sure. You know, I, e- games. E three is right around the corner. Con- right around the corner. Uh, surely this game will be revealed not too long. Uh, what would what would Ubisoft have to show you to get you really excited about Far Cry Five? Hmm. Remember when those bridges were blowing up in, uh, in Just Cause Three? Yes, I want that in Far Cry. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> exploding bridges, yeah, just exploding bridges. Yes. No, I like I like the idea of like deformable environments. I really really like that in uh, yeah. open world stuff now, and we can do it. Te- the technology. It we, have, we have yeah. the technology. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we have we the technology. We can rebuild it. Yeah. I'd like to see that. No, I mean, I think the franchise has really, it's become, uh, you know, the original Far Cry was a game that more or less played it straight. And from Far Cry 2 on, it's just been kind of insane. And it's really leaned into, you know, especially with 3, although that was a little bit uh, there in 2 as well. Like, it's just become, like, I want to see some story trailer that when I'm done watching it, like, my eyes are just, like, wide. And I'm like, whoa. 
Well, yeah, I mean, like, the, the, the main line Far Cry since 2 between uh, the Jackal and then uh, Voss and then Pagan Min and 4 have always had these iconic, incredible bad guys, like these villains that are like some of the best villains in video games. And so, yeah, if they do reveal it, I feel like they need to have a foot forward. Like Primal and Blood Dragon were both, I mean, Blood Dragon was a DLC offshoot. Primal, there was that controversy that I had the same map as 4, so it sort of felt like a, a half step forward. Uh, so, given that this is proper Far Cry 5, yeah. seemingly no subtitle. Um, yeah, I would love the 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 first foot forward to be some sort of a cool iconic villain played by some great actor. Or actor. I want to see like fun systemic interactions. Uh, I, like four had it, but it was really three where like I'm gonna open this tiger cage and then he's gonna go to town for me. I'm gonna load up this truck with C4, drive it into a town, bail from the truck, blow up the C4, and like that was the way that you could take over. Like there's all these crazy videos of people taking over camps in like really unexpected ways, and uh, yeah. I hope we have enough freedom. You mm -hmm. know. I mean, it's a it's a open world shooter with you know polished gameplay and a lot of player freedom with just insane villains and story. Like, yeah, and if it is like you know a lot of the hints of point that it takes place in America, like I wouldn't expect it to take place in urban America because these aren't really urban games; these are outdoorsy games. Yeah. So don't think you're gonna be running around like Chicago or New York or San Francisco. Maybe. Like, yeah, I don't know, but like something like the Rockies or so like what's, the South. What's been the setting for everyone? Were the first two in Africa? First no, one was on an island. Island. island? And that was cry island. like don't Crisis, yeah. Yeah, like don't even look at the first one as a yeah. Far Cry game because that, was, that wasn't even Far Cry Ubisoft. 2 is in Africa. That was Africa. Was yeah, that was the one where you have malaria. And 3 is back to like an island. It was the Bahamas, the yeah. Island. And then oh, four. it was actually the Bahamas? I well, believe so, or the Caribbean, right? Yeah, I don't know that that's spe specified. I thought Definitely it was the Bahamas. Island. It was absolutely the Bahamas. I don't gotcha. know. I, okay. I don't know. That's where I feel like Brody would go to the Bahamas. Yeah. Well, yeah, I do yeah. believe that. And then 4 was like the Himalayas. Isn't it weird that 3 has that whole separate island? Yeah, it's a really unnecessary island. I don't like it. Yeah. It's like in Lost when they introduced the second island. Yep, <laughs> that's pretty simple. Exactly like second Lost. island's never a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that in Lost. Yeah, no. and then it's like right there. They're like, oh, where yeah, are yeah. we? Oh, that's like, where you're on another island, and you're like, Bleh. but then next season, they're like, oh, it's right there. Oh, yeah. wait. No, that's what I want for Far Cry. I just want it to be Lost. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's 100% what I want. All right, yeah. Which I guess we just said was Far Cry 3. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, I do wonder. So, wildlife has always been a big part of of these games. So, I wonder if it is set in some sort of uh, r rural or wildlife setting in the U.S. I wonder what that means. Buffaloes. For the buffaloes. Yeah, buffaloes. Yeah. There's there's bears. Like if you go up in the, like Yosemite lions. or, yeah. or they, they might have to get a little uh, creative, maybe. Yeah. Well, Far Cry, the last uh, what uh, the primal one could, that could have been the United States, right? Did they ever set? Well, it, well, I mean, it, they it's literally the took the, it was the, the same. Map. Map. <laughs> <laughs> so the Pangea version yeah. of that. Are, they, are cougars and mountain lions the same animal? Oh, no, definitely not, man. Uh, I think they are. Sure. I don't what know. About a, no, a cougar is a girl and a mountain lion's boy. Mm. Yes, because you because you mentioned Pangea. Have you guys ever heard of Pangea Ultima? No. Oh. In two like two million years, it's going to go back to another oh, Pangea, nice. and it's called Pangea Ultima. That's great. That's great. Right? I want to make Why? a good like Final that. Fantasy spell. Yeah. yeah, what's Wait, going on? That's pretty good. You're worried about animals. I have I have an idea. It takes place uh, near an abandoned zoo. Ooh. So all those zoo animals are there. So you mm -hmm. just do whatever animals you want. There's a roller coaster. Maybe you incredible. <laughs> oh, I really want that. Maybe you are an it animal. Can blow up part. Yeah. What if you are an animal, like an animorph of some sorts? Ooh. What if you play as a gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> what if we're just spitballing here? No ideas are too crazy. Nothing is off the this table. This is why we don't develop video games. What if it's about kaiju? Uh, far cryju. Ooh, far cryju. Really Hashtag far cryju. Would play. Yeah. Would play. Uh, yeah, no, I, I like the idea of it being uh, based in America. I, I don't know. I, the, the the series has been so. It's been very exotic. The mm -hmm. settings have been very exotic to me. So uh, yeah. the idea of they'd have to kind of. Get pretty creative in, in order to set it here in our own backyard and have it have that same sort of like wild feeling like you or someone who is completely out of their element yeah. in a very dangerous setting, you know, you trying to use your wits to survive. Yeah. yeah. We don't know if it is America, if it's modern America, if it's America yeah. 50 years ago, 100 years ago, probably not 100 years ago. Or in space. I hope it has outposts. That's all, that's all anybody really wants from a Far Cry. Outposts are so fun. I love Outposts. I love any game with Outposts in it. They have it in like Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah, I feel oh, like the yeah. crew had some Outposts. Those were bad. No, they had the, the towers that you got. The crew? They had these towers. Yeah, like, that's, kind of the, the that's kind of the... Even the crew, crew had, had towers? towers yeah. You had to go find them and reveal the map. That's the Ubisoft thing, right? And you just, you were doing this. Yeah, Did you yeah, have to drive the, up? You had to drive yeah. up to the tower what? and then the thing went... And the you had no you idea. You didn't drive up to the top of the tower, but you did have to drive. No, not to the top of the tower, but like near the tower. You had to... <laughs> um, yeah, I hope there's outposts. And then we have to talk about climbing. 
Yeah. Will you be able to climb what anything? What level of climbing was there in four? It's the same sort of thing and until more. you can keep going until it gets too steep and then yeah. you just can't. I mean, that's the whole thing. Things like hills in that game. There's no not usually. There's close. mountains in. I mean, yeah, it is going to mountain be, range on the the north side of the map. Yeah. We're now going to be entering this thing this fall where we start getting these open world games in a post Zelda world, and I know it's everyone gets mad that we talk climbing. about Zelda, <laughs> but like. After Zelda, like you gotta climb everything. You know, like the media trained developers are like whoever gets trotted out to do the interviews, they're gonna have to have some prepared answer for yeah. like you know what. We, we respect our friends at Nintendo and yeah. excited to see what's next. Yeah, <laughs> or just like how climbable are the objects in your game? Be like, well, you know, our game is rooted in a certain amount of realism. Our and game is boots on the ground. Not <laughs> our character doesn't have hands. Ground. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, could Mega Man climb everything? You could you could infinitely wall jump in Mega Man X. <laughs> that's true. That's true. He could climb between walls. You know, there's a lot of games where Mega Man is portrayed as having two hands. Yeah. But like on the box, like no, and even in the game, in the game. So I, but I don't know. Does it like switch into? Yeah, does it I would turn imagine, into a gun. Yeah, I would imagine like, and that's it, how he. It happens instantly when you fire. When yeah. you hit the fire button, it's just like. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying. I'm just. I'm just trying to understand. I just pudgy Mega Man. Yeah. Pudgy Sonic. Pudgy uh, Pikachu. Pudgy Pikachu. If yeah. you want to see Pug Pudgy Mega Man, you should see the Commodore 64 version of Mega Man. Oh, yeah. Pudgy. Where they it's just made, like... they made, they're like, we're going to make this a little bit more graphically intensive than the NES can handle. And so they just added like pixels around his round cheeks. Yeah. He has and like he's... a little bit more of a gut, I yeah. think. <laughs> it's it's really his, silly looking. He's like more gray than blue. Yeah. yeah. That was on Commodore, right? Or Amiga or something. It was it's a PC one of those, version of yeah, Mega Man. One of those early, early computer versions. Uh, Ubisoft's recent successes have all been online games as a service mm -hmm. with. Rainbow Six, The Division, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, For Honor. So I wonder if these new editions of Far Cry and Assassin's Creed are still going to be leaning into mm. the traditional single-player experience. I mean, I yeah. think they learned their lesson with Assassin's Creed, at least, certainly. Like, nobody really... They really pushed, you know, Unity in a very heavily online direction, mm. and, uh, you know, uh, people didn't take... And they 180'd well. with Syndicate, which yeah. was purely single-player. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious about that. You know, their earnings call was definitely... It was them touting games of services, touting the sales of, um, of Ghost Recon and For Honor, but then also being like, but still, people were playing Assassin's Creed and Far Cry, even even though we didn't release those games. So, um, yeah, they're, they're sort of walking that line really carefully. Have you ever listened to an earnings call? I listened to the one yesterday. You did? Yeah. Okay. It was boring. Yeah, they're terrible. Is it just <laughs> Q&A? No, the first oh, half no. the first half is prepared. The first half of it is IBIDA and, and other numbers on, that like, we don't understand. Phone. Yeah, you can't, I can't ask anything. Uh, yeah, the first half is, is, is them touting their successes, and the second half are very bad questions. What a holdover. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I listened to a bunch of financial calls back in my day as a newsman, yeah. Yeah. and yeah, so like they talk for a long time, and it's all like their prepared statements, and that's boring. But the Q and A is oftentimes very interesting because it's the shareholders who like aren't oftentimes aren't gamers. Yeah, they just want to know what's going to like make the money. So they're asking things like, "Where's Where is Grand Theft Auto 6? Yeah. <laughs> and they'll ask yeah. questions and like they'll that. Be like, "Will it have microtransactions?" Exactly. Yeah, they ask you, all these crazy. And questions. you get an answer. I mean, news comes out of them because yeah. I mean, obviously they're wise to people like IGN being on sure. these calls now but back then it's some cfo that again he doesn't know or care about video games at all mm -hmm. like both people in the conversation don't know games they see numbers on a spreadsheet and so they'd be like yeah you know we got another assassin's creed coming fiscal year and like that game hasn't been announced yeah 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 that used to happen a and lot like scoop it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't happen anymore but that used to be like the fiscal call thing yeah it's great i remember those days too <sighs> good old days uh moving on this week we learned that the Nintendo Switch was the best-selling console here in the U.S. in April. That makes it the second month in the row. Uh, it was also the best-selling console in March. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was the best-selling game in April. So What a turnaround for Nintendo, yeah. man. Well, yeah. So I, these are, you know, objectively, this is good news for Nintendo. But the Switch just launched, yeah. so obviously there's going to be a lot of excitement around it. And a lot of people already have a PlayStation 4, so, you know... Uh, I would imagine a lot of people are picking up the Switch as like their second console. So I wonder if like a year from now, is the Switch still the best selling console a year from now? That would be pretty impressive to me. Yeah. No, I mean, I think we're like the more and more time that passes, the more confident I am that this thing is going to be a runaway success. Like yeah. we sort of felt that at launch, like people seem to really be liking this thing. They're playing it at restaurants. They're playing it, you know, before their movie starts. Um, and then every single time you see a scene like that, like every single time someone tweets out like playing Zelda on the plane, like that's an advertisement for this console in a yeah. way that like the other consoles aren't really getting. Um, you know, you saw the whole with the professional soccer team all like playing their switch on the bus or in, in the airplane. Like yeah, Jimmy Fallon's tweeting about it. You know. yeah. Yeah. Um, I 
I totally agree it's going to be a huge success. I think it's going to level out, and I think PS4 is going to go back to being the number one selling console of most months, mm. personally. But the, I will Not. say, there's <laughs> there's 40 million PS4s already sure. out there, yeah. so it's like... Well, it, there's, I think it's more like 50 million now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, well, like they, you know, they're releasing yeah. sales numbers. Yeah. That, so, really, at some point, those consoles, like they still feel new to me, like my head, sure. they're still new consoles, but they're not like three years old, you know? Yeah, so, but, they have to start slowing down. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like it's... it's um, in March and April, uh, it's it's was big Switch games. Uh, Switch months because March the big game was Zelda, and April the big game was uh, Mario Kart. But we're gonna get to a point where, you know, with, with yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, which, so, we're sort of there now, I think, yeah. honestly. Yeah, Nintendo doesn't have a big game for May, right? No, and June is Arms, and that's not a big game. May was Arms. No, no May, uh, not... Arms comes out during E3. And then uh, well, Splatoon. Then, Splatoon, and Splatoon's the, is Splatoon like July? July or August, I think. Yeah. Splatoon's one I'm excited about because I didn't play one. Yeah. Uh, but no, I think when stuff like uh, God of War, uh, Spider Man, even uh, yeah. Microsoft stuff like yeah. like Crackdown, or Red Scorpio, Dead. Red Dead, also. Red Dead uh, uh, PlayStation with, is aligned with Red with Red Dead for marketing purposes. Yeah, same thing with Battlefront, Destiny. Like these That's are true. huge. Yeah. In the summer, but I will say the Switch is uh, Nintendo's bought themselves a little bit of runway and a little bit of padding yeah. because the console continues to be sold out, and you know people are digging it. Like if it sort of had a wishy washy launch, and then they had this dead stretch, like man, Nintendo, yeah. you know, they'd be in a really tight spot. But since yeah. you still can't find one anywhere. How many like are there five million people that still want to buy one and play Zelda? Well, we see you, know? you see anecdotally like, every time we, we put up a link that it's available on Amazon, it sells out in like twenty minutes. Yeah, it was it was twenty five minutes today. It was yep. in stock on Amazon. I will say this people are watching at E three and E three matters so much for Nintendo this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't have well. this huge slew of things that we already know is on Sony system, the Sony system, I, I don't, I don't think it's the same for Microsoft because we don't know what they have that's huge mm -hmm. yet. Um, but like Wiz, just Spider Man and God of War mm -hmm. alone, and then Red Dead is on both of them. That's what I wanted to say. Who, who does E3 2017 matter more to, Nintendo or Microsoft? Oh, it totally matters so much to Microsoft. I think That's it's crazy. I think it's Microsoft. Ooh, you think so? Yeah, I well, honestly I think so. It matters more to one or the other, but man, it's a big show for both of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I mean, Microsoft's the ones that are on the ropes. Sure. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. It's less. It's about Microsoft gaining some form of momentum whatsoever yeah. and Nintendo maintaining momentum. And how, you Nintendo know, I, has phone momentum still. Yeah. They announced this week that there's going to be a new Zelda on... Well, they didn't announce phones. it. was well, the New York yeah, Times reported. A, yeah, Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Street Journal, and then, um, and, you know, with Animal Crossing stuff, but like, man, like Pokemon Go, which they had a third of a stake in last year, was the biggest Andrew game. Andrew Goldfarb got his far fetch in Japan. Yeah, they're so not, he needs one more. He needs, he needs, how soon until Andrew invents a reason to go to in Australia? Australia. <laughs> Yeah, but they're not in risk of going away anytime soon. Like this is fine for them. But like Microsoft, like I'm a little bit worried about them making. Well, think about stuff. Microsoft being such a big multi-billion-dollar company. That's always in the back of my head. It's like Nintendo has to figure it out. Mm -hmm. They have to find a path forward. Microsoft, there's someone in that organization saying, "Do we even want to do this video game thing? <laughs> like, is this even like? Can we sell yeah. the Xbox business? Can we get out of this business entirely? Like, someone in that org is having that level of conversation. Like, it's not essential to their existence in the way that like Nintendo has to find a path through. So it's like I kind of think about that sometimes. Like, it's been such a hard business for them to break through, but it is a very very important part of their business because that's how they 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 get in people's living rooms and how oh. they have like a consumer brand. Like, you know, Microsoft Office and Windows aren't consumer brands. Yeah. I'm excited about Scorpio too. Like, I don't want to like. I mean, sure, I saying, am too. Yeah. I think be having people yeah. think like we're like down on. Yeah. That's like, why I'm, I'm. They could do something really yeah. cool. I'm excited for E3 because like everyone has something to gain and everyone has something to lose. I mean, think what Nintendo did with the Wii U. They mm -hmm. made the Switch. Like, if Microsoft yeah. can pull that off with the Xbox One, that's great. That's why I actually I do. I said Nintendo first, and I think I wanna. I switch my vote to Microsoft. It's gonna be a bigger show for them because yeah. they really need to. They need the Xbox Scorpio needs to win people over, and I guess. In some way, the Nintendo Switch has proven that uh, people can get really excited and like a new console that yeah. doesn't have a ton of software behind it. Yeah, I mean, Nintendo's done a good job of like one. You just small need that indie one, games man. too. Yeah. yeah, all you need to do is make. Breath One of the, of the best wild. games of the last <laughs> decade. Yeah. Well, they're also, I mean, no Netflix, no like no yeah, like right. they have so much good new like they launched strong enough that now it's kind of like nothing but upside. Like when when Activision says, "Hey, we got six games coming to the Switch," you know, we decided to get behind this console because of its early success, and they get a Netflix app and an Amazon app, you know, and some of this other stuff. Like they launched in such a bare bones state that it's like it's kind of all upside all for a while. Yeah. Delays would be a disaster. Yeah. And not having Mario this year would be really hard. 
Yeah, and also, you know, Zelda Mario Year One, like, it, the, I'm they're finally doing the thing where, like, where are all your games? Like, why are you waiting years for these games? They're finally doing Mario and Zelda Year One. But no, like, I'm worried about what's Year Two. Mm -hmm. You got to tell us. And are they gonna have like an original Mario Kart on this console? And how soon? Like, it feel it'll feel bad for that to come too soon. Yeah. So you know, like, at E3, do you think they announce Smash Brothers for Switch? Yeah. I, I can see that being a spring game next year. I think they want all those Wii U games eventually making their way to Switch, but they didn't want it to be seen as like a Wii U port machine at first. So yeah. they're gonna kind of they're gonna dribble them out. Like Plus, we'll get Pikmin to each like, one of those. Like you know, Mario Kart has been such a huge success, and each one of those can be a big success if they just space them out. Or I something. mean, yep. uh, they're gonna follow. I think they'll probably call it uh, Super Smash Brothers Deluxe. You know, I think they'll follow sure. exactly the Mario Kart model because that's another game that had really good DLC. Like Mario Kart 8's DLC was some of the best DLC ever. Like mm -hmm. great courses with great new. Themes. Um, I still haven't played their retro game card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that insane? Yeah, they can yep. do, like, I think they'll do. They you can know, just open that library. They'll announce Animal Which Crossing. Has never happened before. They're really bad about that. Animal <laughs> Crossing, Smash, uh, you know. You bundle it, the NES classics together. Yeah, yeah, maybe they'll do a SNES remix. Like, that's, a, Maker. that's a great yeah. E3 for them. And if they get even a modicum of third party support. Uh, what's particularly impressive about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe being the best-selling game of April is that it was only available for two days wow. of the reporting period. Uh, it was out 28th, and then yeah. the actual, because of the way MPD works, it only goes through the April 29th. Yeah, and I read uh, it sold more in those two days than the original Mario Kart 8 sold in its entire first month. It makes me really happy. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Like, we're unbiased here at IGN. Like, we don't prejudge things. But I just, I really like Mario Kart, and I like Nintendo, and I'm happy to see them experiencing some success. Mario Kart and Wii is one of the best-selling games of all time, yep. period. I mean, that series has, has been in many, many, many houses, and everybody knows it. It's just such, like, a, a force. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of that Zelda mobile game that's supposedly coming after Animal Crossing, do you guys know Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that series plays like Sheer and the Wanderer, right, where it's turn-based... Uh, randomized dungeon crawling, yeah. Randomized dungeons, and every step you take is a turn, right? Uh, I want the Zelda mobile game to be like Zelda Mystery Dungeon. Yeah, Interesting. Ooh. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Slow or down, it was it you that said uh, that said like Zelda Go, like yeah. uh, like so it's almost these like Lara puzzle, like, grid puzzle pace things. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking Pokemon Go. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean it can't be. That's good. I don't want a game where there's a digital D pad and that's a digital. A, I'm like, trying. That's that what I'm trying. I'm trying to think what would work. You the right Pokemon. Just a tap. Yeah. Then let's check in with listeners. Hey, listeners. Hey. Listeners, remember you can always reach us at the email address gamescoop at IGN.com. Although we should also set up Omega Cops at IGN.com. Yeah. Goose. So that would work. Gamescoop.com. Uh, this is Andy, the expat from Germany. Nice. Oh. Does that mean he's, he he's is an American, American or was an American? He is an American. Uh, he says, living in Germany. An expat from, oh, you're, he, he didn't say he's from expat Germany. From Germany. He's, does that mean he's, he's emailing us from Germany? Yeah, I imagine I he lives in Germany, but he was born in America. Right. Yeah. That's because, the way I read that. Okay. Because a patriot, I think, only applies to America. No true? one else can be a patriot. I'm, I'm, is that true? I actually don't know. Is that true? No. <laughs> See, I don't even know. You guys are telling me different things. Yeah. I think the term patriot started as an American thing. I think you can be patriotic for whatever country you're in. I like, would think. The, the real word is brother. The French can be patriotic for France, surely. So you can be an expat from anywhere. No, none of us know anything. anything. <laughs> There's no way to know. About anything. If you want to know about Disgaea, I can tell you about Disgaea. Yes. <laughs> anyway, this is Andy the expat from Germany. He says, I've been listening to Goose Camp for a few years, <laughs> few years now, and there are a few terms that get brought up time and again that are not always immediately clear uh -oh. to me. One of those terms is Metroidvania. Mm. It's clear that this term originated from Metroid and Castlevania. What is not clear is what qualities exactly make a game Metroidvania. Could mm. you shed some light on this? That's a good question. I love that question. Yeah, you you gain, uh, so you're exploring a nonlinear world, a semi-open world, but it's not that open because there's a lot of paths that are blocked off to you until you get upgrades and powers that let you double jump to reach somewhere higher or a gun that lets you open a door you couldn't open before. And uh, you explore this world uh, unlocking new powers that then sort of widen the area that you're able to explore and, and investigate. Let me Let me shorten that. It's a game like Metroid. Well, that's no, it's not like said. Metroid, though. It's like Super Metroid. It's like Metroid. <laughs> well, the original Metroid the was original, like that a little. Seriously, yeah. it's a game like Metroid. The original Metroid is a Metroidvania, right? So when people say that, they're really just saying it's a game like Metroid. Yeah. But a lot of people's introduction to Metroid was a game that was like Metroid, which is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yeah, which or is Super Metroid. Yeah. not 
you have to like think about all the Castlevania games and like only Symphony of the Night and then the games that are Symphony of the Night like are like GBA ones. Yeah, yeah or, or what was referred to there. Yeah, well, that became all of Castlevania for a while. They've sort of dialed that back now since. But that's what Castlevania. Now there's no Castlevania. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they had, like they're always two D. No, well, Metroid Prime's a Metroidvania. Dark Souls is a Metroidvania. I don't think so. What about like? Because none no. of the Castlevania games in 3D are Metroidvania. Oh, none of the Castlevania ones, but whoa, whoa, there are. What about and Metroid games are just Metroid-like? So a Metroidvania, I think, has to have the qualities of both those when they're combined in 2D platforming. So Metroid Prime is not Metroidvania. No. Nor is That's Batman Arkham game. Asylum. Uh, see, I'm not. Ooh, Arkham Asylum is totally a Metroidvania. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I just wouldn't call it that. There's no vania to it. Uh, well, okay, so... How do you mean? Oh, no, there's a Vania... Yeah, we, we, call it Castle, we call it Metroidvania because Castlevania Symphony of the Night popularized the Metroid formula, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Is that, um, is that correct? Because, yeah. like... It's being... First of all, it's being very generous to Castlevania. Castlevania oh, is a really, Metroid like, thing. What it, like, when you call something Metroidvania, what is Castlevania bringing to the table? Nothing. Just that it borrowed a lot from Metroid? Yeah. Well, I These think, games are all Bagman-likes. There's an arcade game called Bagman. <laughs> Bagman, Bagman screens, like. you can is go back Bagman, on them. You can is go Bagman back Arkham Bagman. Asylum a, a Metroidvania? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's interesting. Wasn't that? I think the term was coined either by Jeremy Parrish or Scott Sharkey. See, I don't know if it's... I've always others. heard Jeremy Parrish, but I don't know if that's a pocket. He denies it. <laughs> he doesn't want that baggage. That bag uh, man baggage. He owns the domain! <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, and then there's also uh, castle droids, the term that uh, a friend of mine invented. No, that's not a real thing. <laughs> it's just the opposite. You remember the... Uh, <laughs> What's the opposite of a metro? <laughs> like, Madden's a castle droid. <laughs> Do you remember the Castlevania, <laughs> the downloadable Castlevania for Xbox Live Arcade? That was like a multiplayer. Oh yeah, no. boss rush. Harmony of Distance. Like, it was all. It was like a know, loot. That's one of the GBA games. No, it was. What, what was it? We for? played this. It was for, XBLA. XBLA. It was a multiplayer that was like. Oh yeah, that was great. Like, it's all about collecting loot. Yeah, and you all fought this giant boss together. That was I've, so good. I've never heard of this game, but it's not uh, called Harmony of Distance because that's one of the GBA. What was cool is that it scrolled way in and way out. Yeah. So you'd be in like a oh, room that's right. Together, and then I do remember that. You'd see everybody in the room. If you went in the opposite direction, the camera yeah. got farther and farther and farther yeah, away. It up. And it was more like Death Trap filled, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like not much of a real Castlevania it's game. But I remember Blood us playing it. Blood. But I don't remember if it was actually any good. Yeah. I'd like, to, I wonder if that's backwards compatible. Army of Despair. Ooh, Army of Despair. you were very close. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, I actually recently have revisited the GBA Castlevania games, uh, and they're 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 cool and they're good. But like playing them, like well, there's three of them, uh, all in like one. Yeah. Very. Yeah. It just starts, starts. It's all like, well, I've done this before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all very same. You need to be your part, is what you're saying. They get a, they get away with a lot in that by spreading out the sequels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the and the second one, uh, that's Harmony of Dissonance, I believe, on the GBA. Is uh, really famous for being. Uh, if you play it on a Game Boy Advance SP or uh, you know some other screen that has a backlight, like if you're playing it on your computer or whatever, the colors are so bright and garish and terrible because it was a response to Circle of the because it was on the original GBA that had did that not have a back screen, dark backlit. non backlit yeah. screen and Circle of the Moon was a GBA launch game and you couldn't see it like it was so dark you had to like shine a light perfectly on your screen to be able to play Circle of the Moon so they released a sequel that looks gorgeous on a non backlit GBA and on any other screen it looks terrible <laughs> Actually, I haven't played Symphony of the Night in a long time. I should, great. I should revisit that one. I downloaded it. It's backwards compatible on Xbox One, and I have it on 360, and so I just replayed it recently. It's great. What's a better Metroidvania game, Symphony of the Night or Super Metroid? Super Metroid. It's like Sophie's I Choice. I like them the same. But Super, Super Metroidvania's Metroid Choice. Earlier. Nah, Super Metroid's... Uh, uh, yeah. I like Zero Mission. I think that's the best. best well, yeah, so... Speaking of the handheld ones, uh, a Metroidvania that I've never played that is supposed to be good is Aliens Infestation yes. on DS. It's really good. It was yeah. like released right near the end of the DS when the 3DS was being released. That game's not very it's complicated, though. It, it ends before you think it would. Then there's Shantae. Those games are... I haven't played the Shantae games. Are they Metroidvanias? Uh, well, I think those are... Uh, what's the Alien game called? Infestation. I think those are uh, Sean Festation games. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> uh, and the other, I just coined that. You can't take that from me. <laughs> oh, you like Sean Festations? <laughs> that sounds uh, awful. Uh, what, I want to know what Metroidvania anagrams do. You're just used to Metroidvania. That yeah. used to sound awful. The other term that Andy, the expat from Germany, would like clarified is, what is a shmup? And he spells it, he spells it S-C-H. M up like a schmear. <laughs> I've seen it spelled that way. Yeah, that but it's I. like it doesn't. You, you like these games. You can yeah. take this one. So it's just short for shoot 'em up. 
just sort of a compressed version of shoot 'em up, which is so like a first person shooter. No, I'm asking. I'm intentionally no. Yeah, it's generally refers to like old school arcade shooters, like Bullet Hell. Yeah, Bullet Hell, side scrolling or top down. Uh, a lot of so times, like R type, R type, Aruga. and even Dodon Dodon Patch. Gradius. Except so like R type and Gradius are sh shmups, but not Bullet Hell. Yeah, so. yeah that's Bullet Hell is like a certain type of shmup. Right. And what does that mean? Uh, it's just like when the screen is filled with bullets. Bullet Hell is it's Dodon actually Patchy, that series. Yeah, you're right. That's a really important distinction because you know shmups like our type or whatever are more about like twitch skill, you know, and dodging. Yeah. Whereas I think about Bullet Hell, they're, they almost become like puzzle games. They're more about like pattern recognition, mm. like well, yeah. finding the gaps in yeah. in the bullets and um, and getting through them that way. Yeah. I mean, there's still an element of twitch skill, but like sometimes they deliberately have slowdown in it to like help you survive. Yeah. Yeah. And like see, like see what's about to come. Or, uh, out how to dodge? Yeah, she wars, shmups. Uh, yeah, I guess so, but it's like it's a little bit different. Yeah. I've heard those described as twitch shooters. I would say or no. Arcade shooters. That's a twin stick shooter. So in my mind. Another weird twin question. Stick. Single screen twin Would stick shooter. Sam Robotron like? Yeah, yeah, shmup. That's definitely. Robotron. You have like a first person shmup. No. Serious Sam is all about just like. Next, it's not dodging. At you. It's I think it's dodging, right? You're not dodging bullets. Dodging. You're dodging men. The dodging mechanic is actually really important. That's yeah. like an important clarification, I think. Yeah. No. I don't know, it's, it, it's, it seems like as soon as Doom happened, it, it became about first person shooters yeah. instead of shmups. What about Sin and Punishment? Yeah. That's an on rails Real shooter. shooter. Yeah. yeah like, like Space like Harrier. Fox. Yeah. Like maybe like tangentially related. It's in the shmup family. It's a shmup. shmup. Maybe, shmup. There's maybe there's like Maybe there's like the shooter. The overall okay, shooter yeah. family and shmups is like I kind of now want to create like a Shmup, genre family tree. Shmup and yeah. on rails are Star Fox sixty four. Yeah. I don't. Sean is asking about Star Fox. So that's a rail shooter. A rail yeah, shooter, I would yeah. say Sin and Punishment. They're cousins. You know, they're not shmups. They're not allowed to like mm -hmm. kiss. They have, the, they have well, the same grandfather, but they're not, not allowed illegal, to kiss. <laughs> but frowned upon. And now you know what it's like when we put together lists like top one hundred RPGs yeah, to tough. be in the room while we determine what an RPG it's the worst is. Thing. Sufferable. And I'll, I'll give you a little hint there. Uh, we've never figured out what an RPG is. It's terrible. <laughs> Steve Butts was drawing diagrams on the whiteboard yeah. with like, and he drew a line, everything on this side. Of Lines and RPG, and then it's Dan much, was trying to say that Diablo three wasn't an RPG. It's kind of like Twelve Angry Men, and at a certain point, you're like, "All right, I don't care, just kill him." Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, this is Matt from Bellingham, Washington. Ooh. Nice. He says, "Just wanted to share a personal story about Yonoid." <laughs> oh no! Here we, here we go. <laughs> a game and character I had never heard of before Gamescoop episode four thirty four. I think that's when it was uh, the video game twenty questions. Yeah. Uh, he says, I was playing trivia last night at the pub, and one of the categories was advertising, where we were tasked with naming the brand, giving the mascot or brand ambassador. The second question in the category was to name the brand that the Noid was advertising for. I knew immediately that it was Domino's solely because of 20 questions. Nice. I wish I could say that answering that question correctly propelled us to a beer field victory. Mm. Alas, we had to settle for a middle of the pack finish. Uh. Thought you guys would like to know that you are truly a force for good what in a the cool world. Also, you steal that category. Yeah, I was going to say, you can steal that category. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know why Domino's stopped using the Noid? Yes, because that dude named the Noid held up the Domino's. Well, his name isn't the Noid. Oh, his last name was Noid, right? But a mentally yeah. unstable man with the last name Noid thought the commercials were a personal attack against him. I think this is in Atlanta. Yeah. And he went to a Domino's and held the employees there hostage at gunpoint. at gunpoint. I've never heard oh, yeah. this. Oh, yeah. For hours. Yeah. Thankfully, no one was harmed. However, he was arrested. He was not, uh, he, I don't think he went to prison because he was found mentally insane, but he went to a mental institution and very sad into the story, later killed himself. Whoa. And that's why the Noid is no longer used. Same, same exact thing happened with that moon at McDonald's. <laughs> the moon with sunglasses. That was for their late night menu, right? Is that what it was for? <laughs> the moon with sunglasses. Remember that guy? <laughs> hey, do, I, is he this plays, about me? He plays piano. <laughs> Did you know that Taco Bell Chihuahua uh, bit a dude and had to be put down? <laughs> uh, that was really sad. I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> I'm just I'm imagining like an alternate universe, like a like an Earth Two that didn't have you know a mentally unstable man with the last name. No like, would we Noid. still have the Noid? No, we would not. The Noid is in the Domino's <laughs> pinball machine. So the Noid is in, in the recent years. Domino's has Thomas sort of like, I think they brought him back for some sort of online campaign mm -hmm. or like put him on a T-shirt or something. But yeah, I think they officially discontinued using him in their ad campaigns in 1989. Probably a good move. And this has been Yo Scoop. This is Jeremy in Chicago. 
He says, love the show. Thanks for doing it each week. Thank you also for the retro chip tunes you splice into the show. My question is, how many more bone-dry summers without substantial new titles must we suffer through? Oh, come on. The only thing I plan on buying between now and the fall is Shadow of War, and that's not until August 22nd. You all have talked on the show before about the reasons for this season-long drought. That's the worst. But no more, I say. When will we unclog our crusty backlogs and have major publishers shower us with new releases in June, July, and August? Is this not good business sense? If anyone is caught up with all the games from the first four months of this year, then you are incredible, and I applaud you, because I am stoked to not have games come out for okay. like a month. It is true. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Uh, I have a backlog I'm still working through. An incredible uh, first half of the year for games already. However, he is correct. If you're just looking at big releases for June, July, and August... Middle Earth Shadow of War is pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. And I do, I personally, I mean, this is just a weird mental quirk of mine. I lump August into fall. I don't think about it as being a summer month. I think about June, July as like summer. Well, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> you, we were just talking about. You're robbing <laughs> yourself of an, an extra month of summer? You go back to school in August. Yeah, but you go back to school at like the like end August of August. August 23rd. Okay, uh, we were just talking about whether September qualifies as summer yeah. or fall. Oh, no, no, no. A lot of people. I mean, are, legally, summer doesn't end until the 21st legally. of September. <laughs> Leave um, cops, Marty. No, but call reason, the summer cops. The reason I scoffed when Damon was reading the question is because it was just two years ago that Witcher 2 dropped right in the summer. Witcher 3. 3, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. And we had, uh, well, that was May. Yeah. Same thing with The Last of Us. Like, May has been the last couple of years. I think Arkham Uncharted Knight, 4, right? Uncharted 4. Uncharted 4 was last May. Uh, you know, and this year we had Parade and Injustice. But yeah, uh, June and July are genuinely, generally pretty slow yeah, months. Last June. We Wait, it's so- May right now. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were supposed to get No Man's Sky last June, but then that got pushed back to August. Then. Yeah, so I mean, I think the big things in June, like we said, are Arms, the Crash trilogy, and I think July is Splatoon, Agents of Man. Honestly, I was, yeah, honestly, looking at the entire summer, there's nothing that I am super interested in until Shadow of War and Everybody's Golf. In, oh in man, August. everybody's golf is going to be so good. I mean, that's going to be awesome, but that's I mean, not until August. It's such an opportunity to just pluck out, like, look at IGN's Game of the Year nominees or, you know, the Metacritic best games from the last few years, like, whatever tool you want to use and say, I didn't never play Stardew Valley, I didn't never play this. Yeah. Like, you need a chance to play Nier or Neo yeah, that's or, true. yeah, yep. Resident Evil. I am in disbelief that people don't put out a hit game in June, right after E3, when everybody's interested in games. All kids make, are out of school. Make money all summer. What? Yeah, games... Playing goes way up in the summer, and we know that because our game help traffic goes way up in the summer. Yeah. People are playing uh, games all the time. Put out your games then. You know what used to come out in the summer? Metroid Prime. What? Like that it was a summer series. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Uh, all the primes come out in the summer? At least one and two did, and maybe three. I remember Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion came out the same day. I remember that, yeah. Huh. And they had a weird... Yeah. They had that, they I'm had pretty that sure Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion were in November. I think that's... Maybe. I can't remember. So I remember being depressed the whole month because I don't like that. What game. am I thinking of? Su- Sunshine. I'm thinking of GameCube games. Sunshine. So Wind Waker. Like a summer game. Wind Waker and Sunshine. Like I think Prime Two were all late summer. Yeah, you games. might be right. See that? Nintendo used to hit this window, and I really liked it. Yeah, no longer. I'm at a loss for big games I can think of that came out in July. Joe Kazooie came out in June. No way, really. Yeah, I remember that. That's I remember getting weird. it for my birthday. Yeah. June, huh? Mm-hmm. It's crazy that if you play a game, and it's partially because we just know Banjo Kazooie really well now, but you can play that game in two sittings. You know, like I'm just gonna blast through it all in one weekend. But like that was like your summer game. Like yeah. I'm, and and it's not like you were just playing it for a half hour and putting it down. Like people played it and played it and played it. At least for me, it's because I wasn't using guides. I didn't have game sure. help. So it's like I'm just wandering around. I'd wander all the way out of Grunty's castle when I didn't know where to go yeah. and wander around the overworld and then wander back in. Oh it's gosh, like, I get to play ukulele this summer. What a bunch of dumb kids we were yeah you were dumb it's coming out for switch upside down question mark DVD. Yeah. uh this is nick he says that's it well hold on he says hello damon and the rest of the omega cops panel <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm nick yes. from kalamazoo michigan okay and i'm a relatively new fan of the show i can say that i'm hooked and think you guys do a great job reporting the gaming news of the world getting to my question i'd like to say that within two weeks i'm attending Graduate. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm graduating high school, and later this year I'm attending college at WMU. That being said, I'm kind of kind of at an impasse for what I should do for a career. Mm. Watching your show, it brought the question to mind: Would I enjoy reporting video game news? So I thought, who better to ask than the Game Scoop panel themselves? Mm-hmm. Which brought me to ask these hopefully not too personal questions. Starting off, do you all enjoy your jobs? <laughs> yes. Yes. Dream job. Yes. Kidding me? Enjoy it. In my 11 years. Every Wednesday. 
For the past 11 years, I've never dreaded getting up for work Monday morning, and I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, same. same. Next question. Uh, what are the main requirements for being a video game journalist, if that's the actual job title? Back in the day, when I started, you really for the entry-level position in editorial, you needed two things. You needed to know a lot about video games, and you needed to be a good writer. Mm. Change the, you know, those are still... Uh, Two good things. Necessary yeah. requirements, but uh, I think the uh, skill set has expanded a little bit, and mm -hmm. Sam yeah. could probably speak a little bit more. I just so. posted two job descriptions a couple weeks ago. We talked about it on Game Scoop. I won't uh, re go over what those are, but definitely check them out. They're still up, not filled. Uh, and you can look up IGN is hiring because they wrote an article about it. And in those, you can go in and look at the bullet points I wrote for those jobs, and they will answer this question. And some of those things are really obvious, and I think we've even talked about them on the show before, too. But uh, we, I, at this point, we need you to have published work. And published work means uh, you can be your own published work. You could do that on your own YouTube channel. You could be uh, just streaming all the time. Or you could be you know, just publishing stuff in, uh, on your own website. A lot of people that apply for jobs here have created their own website. And it looks and sounds and, and acts a lot like IGN. I, I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like that's, That took a lot of work. And uh, if you have to create... We will know it by seeing how much you've created already. Because you know, back when I didn't have this job, all I wanted to do was come home and write about video games. Like that's the t type of person I want to hire. And uh, these days, it's all about making video too, about video games. So I think having a basic skills to edit and uh, publish your own videos is very important. And uh, and still, writing skills are of utmost important. And it's not just because we make videos. Uh, we're even though we're making videos more. We write scripts for those videos, mm -hmm. and we have to read them. And they have to sound natural, and then we have to title those videos, and we have to make sure everybody sees them. And that takes really good headline form. You learn that in school. You can go get that in journalism, but a lot of people uh, now read YouTube guidelines and understand how to headline stuff from that, which is awesome. So we need want to see what you've done that's creative and amazing, and even if it's not professional, that's like the best first step for what requirements there are for the job. Everyone in editorial, core editorial, uh, has to, as part of the interview process, as a camera test. So you, it, it's, it's for some jobs, it's critically important. For some jobs, it's not quite as critically important, but it's still something we look at. Um, and that's not true. I got hired six years ago, and even I had to do a camera test. So, you know, in the old school, you didn't have to do that. And now that's one way the business has changed: is you have to be multidisciplinary now in a way that you didn't have to be before. Um, so you don't need to be an expert. You don't need to be great. But we, you know, we require everyone to at least be able to speak extemporaneously about games without completely, you know, falling apart because that is a part of this job. Yeah. yeah, and we have different types of writers now, right? Like yeah. we have some writers that are just focused on features and some that are just focused on news. And so, but the vast majority of people we hire, uh, we want to know if they're good critics. And a good critic is someone who uh, just will immediately share their opinion about this, these pop culture topics with mm -hmm. this movie, TV, comic, or game. And uh, we love working with those people. And they're also uh, have a, an informed opinion, which is really important, and can deliver it in a really kind, smart way. You know, they're not, they're not jerks about it. Mm -hmm. And his final question is, is this a job that I can live off of? And we're all, <laughs> well, we're all still living. We're all still living in what is, you know, probably the most expensive city in America. So, you know, I don't think too many people go into uh, gaming media looking to get rich, mm -hmm. but you know, we're, we're yeah, all I, still. I lived as a freelancer yeah. off this job. All right, so there's different levels yeah. of living off of off of work, you know, yeah. which is really important. I mean, Excellent. it's not unique. I mean, media in general. Yeah, that's not that's, a high paying say. Yeah. career yeah. field. Yeah. It just yeah. isn't. However, you know, if you're talking about a job that is rewarding and empowering mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. fun and enjoyable, free like games, like these, you know, we have a game library. We get to play everything for free. Yes. I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a perk. <laughs> It is for me. I mean, that saves me. I mean, we say it kind of as a joke. I mean, I know you're not joking, but I mean, all joking aside, if I would have bought 20 games a year, that's basically like a thousand bucks in my pocket, yeah. you know, that I don't have to spend that money. Yeah. All right. It is time to play video game 20 questions. Yes. Our question this week comes from Isaac Valdez in Fort Worth, Texas. So a couple people have been commenting and I've been seeing your comments and I believe them. Uh, but I, I, I'm a little bit skeptical about the exact difference it's going to make. But a lot of people are saying, only go for consoles, don't go for a year. 
And I think well, dividing it by 2000 first, like divides it into a couple consoles and a couple consoles, yeah. and it might eliminate one question out of that. I don't know. What people say is they should, you should ask what generation it's from. Yeah. The problem is that like that's not how I think. No, we do ask that. We say about, 60, you know, PS1. Era. Yeah, but I can't tell you that what the fourth generation of consoles was. I, don't, I wouldn't but use I think that number. Right. A lot of younger gamers can. They've like learned to think of it that way. But like I never okay. have. I can't. Yeah. I can't tell you right off the top of my head what the but fourth. You generation do you count like Atari as first gen? Well, there is an actual if you. Go like, like I think we're in like the seventh. Yeah, we know Damon's great yeah. weakness. Yeah, that would be my weakness. Yeah. Anyway, well, it's also all of our weaknesses. <laughs> He'd be like, "Yes, it is sixth generation." He'd be like, "Oh, what does that mean?" <laughs> all right, let the questioning begin. All right, does your character speak? Yes. It's not Chrono Trigger, guys. Definitely not Chrono Trigger. Uh, is uh, is this game uh, after? Uh, January first. <laughs> <We're> immediately, <laughs> th- we heard your suggestion. We <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't like. The, I personally didn't like the suggestion. Uh, after January first, two thousand. Yes. Um, was this on the Xbox three hundred and sixty era of generation of consoles? Uh, you're asking if it was part of that generation. Yeah. No. Right. Is this? Uh, well, so it's either so it's either OG the current Xbox. generation or yeah. Um, okay, so is it the generation before Xbox, GameCube, PS two? Part of that is as an is it that generation the yeah. Xbox GameCube PS2 generation? Hold on, ask this question again. Is it a part of the Xbox GameCube PS2 generation? Yes. I don't like where that went. I don't like where that went at all. Uh, was this a console exclusive? To was it exclusive to one of the platforms? Yes. Ooh, nice. I'm kind of worried. This is a handheld game. Yeah, that's fine. Is this a handheld <laughs> always, game? It, we, no. we burn questions on it every week. Is it ever a handheld game? Sometimes. Sure. Is this a handheld game? No. Okay. Okay. I'm not worried anymore. Uh, I mean, is an Xbox exclusive? No. <sighs> is it a PS2 exclusive? Yes. All right. Ooh, Ape Escape. <laughs> that's not. That's PS1. <laughs> it's, not, it's not. Is it? Yes, it was PS1 because they introduced the analog sticks. Oh, right. Was this made in Japan? No. Oh, good question. Ooh. Western. So, what is that? That eliminates a lot. <laughs> Speaking of westerns, it could be Red Dead. No, it can't. Well, so that is means that it. Xbox? That was on Xbox as well. Yeah, I don't know this. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> No, stop it. That's PS2. Stop talking about PS2, PS2, <laughs> PS2. Uh, Jack and Daxter. Could be Jack and Daxter. So Naughty Dog, Insomniac. Could be Naughty Dog, could be Insomniac. Um. Uh, it, it, Wait, okay. Because it's Western made, PS2 exclusive, where your character speaks. Yeah. Did, uh, I mean, was this game, was this game, did you do like... <laughs> Hopping and bopping in this game. Is this, is this, <laughs> Sorry. Is, oh, is it a hop and bopper? <laughs> it's a hop and bop, like a plat, like a platforming game. No. Oh, that's it's ten. It's definitely not one of the games we mentioned. Those yeah. are both hop and boppers. <clears throat> uh, is this a is this a is this a, 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 a mature game? A mature game? Like rated M for mature? Yeah. Yes. Is it finally, Ooh. Really good is it finally gonna be black? No, that was a multi-platform game. Uh, so this could be Manhunt. I, I was about to say I believe Manhunt and that came Manhunt. To, that came to. I don't. Th- I think Fox. Manhunt and State of Emergency were PS2 exclusives. Does this have sequels? Yes. Manhunt had a sequel. State of Emergency did, did not. Correct. Manhunt was not rated M. It was rated AO, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It was sold in stores. Mm. It was sold just the stores. second one had almost was. Okay. Uh, it's not GTA Three because I can be Xbox and every literally everything else ever. I mean, uh, uh, okay. Well, Wait, were you? I mean, so what do you say? You ask what? Oh, oh wait, now it might be. If the game is exclusive to a console for years and then comes to it later, it's not considered. Oh, no. Exclusive. Is it GTA 3? Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 wait, you were. That was like, yeah. you shot from the hip, dude. That wasn't a real question. Also, it could have been. It, I mean, that wasn't a real question. You said it. You yeah. asked, was it yeah. GTA 3? No, like, I know. It could have been Vice City or San Andreas. I'll take credit for the win. <laughs> but now that the cat's out of the bag, I just want to say that was me just Spitballing. Uh, thinking. There were no bullets in well, the gun. I feel like, <laughs> no. <it's> like, <laughs> I mean, it's like, I can't ever clarify yeah. anything without giving it away. It's hard, I, would but not, I don't want you to like. I would not call GTA 3 a console exclusive. Except that it was. It came to Xbox. Yeah, but yeah, later. The, so, like, what like, is it? That no, same so, Okay, I mean, that's fine. If okay. you want me to answer those questions that way, I can. You can start but clarifying like, I, maybe, like, or do you mean at launch or for all time or something like that? I mean, no, it's, it's a good point. If I, if we got to uh, Super Nintendo and the answer was Link to the Past and yeah. we said, was it wasn't exclusive? Yeah. 
Well, yes, it's an exclusive, but it also came to every Nintendo I mean, platform. I'm not yeah. saying this needs to be the 20 questions rule. In my mind, it's like like I think about like Valkyria Chronicles did come to Steam eventually, like yeah. years I later. Mean, but nobody the, ever thinks about that. No, as but like, GTA 3 didn't come to Xbox until the trilogy came out, so it was years. Did we win yeah. this? Yeah, you guys won this. Oh, Omega won. Cops! But it's because we I won, but we're upset. I kind of had to give it away. Yeah. A scoop like, gem. I, I'm not trying to mislead anybody. But, you know, so we just need to establish some rules. If you want, when you ask the question, if it's exclusive, you want me to literally take you literally, meaning it remains an exclusive today? That's why I said all those Super Nintendo games are now on Wii and Wii U. Yeah, but that's virtual console. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't count, dude. I mean, but in my mind, again, GTA, like, I, I think, like, that game sold many, many millions of copies on Xbox, I yeah, think. Yeah, but when like, I think of, if someone was like, what were the big PS2 exclusives, I'd probably lose GTA. Uh, I wouldn't. I would. I mean, Resident Evil 4 was exclusive to the, the GameCube. GameCube. Yeah. It came to PS2. Or, yeah, yeah but it was. Oh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on David's side. We lost right. this one. No, you didn't lose. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't lose. You Wait guys, a second. You guys got there. Anyway, thank you, Isaac Valdez, That's good. Yeah. Fort Worth, That's Texas, it. for that suggestion. If you have your own suggestions for Video Game 20 questions, you can email them to gamescoop at IGN.com. And that is all the scoops that we have for you this week. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop. And as cop, me go. 